Bisaki. Um, and my name is Ruby Chani. And our project is called Kiko Nadigali. So, uh, does anyone know what Kiko Nadigali stands for? It's a Kiswahili word. Okay, so Kiko Nadigali is basically a boy and an Aru, which means that we're working together, like with the public, to solve an issue that we thought of. So basically, let's have this situation. Um, I'm a mother and I'm at home and I just started a fire in the kitchen and I don't have the necessary numbers to call because I doubt people have on their contacts or let's say I have a fire, you know, a fire brigade number. No, like in our app, it provides you with numbers of, let's say, of the current situation you're in. Let's say I'm, I'm sick, I need to call a hospital that's close to me. And I mention it's offline because, you know, not everyone has access to Wi-Fi. So, or bundles. So let's say I'm now in that situation, there's a fire, I can just log on to the app and it will locate where I am and with that I can you know, get a number of a fire brigade. So basically this app uses GPS to track your exact location and how many, depending on your emergency. So there's supposed to be a section for your emergency. So for example, the example she gave for the fire. So uh, it puts it's a fire, then it uses GPS to track your exact location and give you like a variety of the numbers of how many public great stations are near you, yeah, and things like that. So it makes it easier for those people who don't have like fire station numbers on their phones or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So do you guys have any questions? Uh, so um, is there another way you can input your problem without having to type it in? Because I feel like if you're, having, if you're in a fire, maybe you won't have the time to actually type in. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, the same amount of time it would take you to type in the number of, uh, for example, a fire station, it will be the same amount of time it will take you to key in your emergency. So it's basically supposed to be an alternative to what, uh, for example, going to a directory, getting the number of a fire station near you, then keying it in your phone. So basically it just gives you something easy. Uh, in addition, in the front, you know, this, the front layout, um, there's a series of, you know, the most common incidences that occur, accidents. So like, let's say this is the app, so it can be divided into you know, yeah, so here there will be like a fire, an accident, so like those are the most common things. So like let's say if it's something rare, like you're lost, you can key that in. But like if it's a fire, it's able you're able to just click and since it's the, the phone already knows where you are, like the app. Um so it will just bring you numbers of um, great situations of accidents, uh ambulance yeah. Yeah. Um So basically, Doctors Connect came up from, you know, when, in the past when there was the Ebola outbreak, like that hurt me so much. When you saw all the people crying on the news, crying how their families died, crying that, that oh my God, like their lives are being changed so much by a disease that could have been stopped before it got so far. And we thought of a way that they could report these diseases before they could spread far enough to affect that vast number of people in time. And that's Doctors Connect was me. So um, our idea is basically to, to create a platform in which um, medical personnel, not only doctors, but also nurses and specialists, who can, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, platform where they can connect with, communicate when there is uh, an outbreak of however small the disease, from cholera to even a common cold, so that other medical personnel from other countries can communicate and say, I think we have an idea, you can do this, 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 or can we send in some people to help you? <coughs> okay, uh, I have a question. So, um, I don't know if this is like an idea, maybe, like something that maybe you can put in data, I'm not sure, but tell me if it works. Um, a way for doctors to um, kind of like track okay if they find a new solution yeah to something like can they put it on the website or app so that it's also easily accessible accessible like i don't have to go and ask um how does this and this happen if 
like a doctor from Russia had a patient and they struggled to find out what was found, find out what was wrong. And then he put it up and he was like, also today um, I was dealing with this and I found out that when you use this and this, it helps. Do you think that can work maybe on the app? I think what we do about that is we can have like pages for specialized things, like maybe an orthopedic page or pediatric page, <coughs> where like doctors of those fields can announce if they found something new that you can do for a certain thing. But then also because of copyright issues, you, th that could bring a few issues because some things have to be copyrighted first and all that good stuff. So then, yeah, that will have to go. Um, our, project, our project is Alu Water. So what our project entails is um, we thought that you can use um, you know, uh, aluminium from old, old batteries, old car batteries. So using aluminium and sulfate can use you know, dirty water. So using aluminium and sulfate we could you know, use water and stop um, water pollution and even pollution because um, old car batteries are usually grown and using car batteries we are stopping pollution. I have a, I think I may have a solution how you can easily get the car batteries. You know people take their cars for like, I don't know, monthly just service. service. So maybe sometimes when you take your car for service and they tell you the battery is old, you need a replacement. So they probably throw those old batteries away. So maybe you can just like... My name is Michelle Abadi and I'm singing with Guya. We're working on Sphinx. So basically Sphinx is an educational and interactive gaming app that provides a platform to um, increase the interest of learning in class. And also for the people like struggle in some subjects, like they can get a lot of help from our app. So teachers can use it, both teachers and students at home or in school, to help a student understand a concept, or those who lack interest in a certain subject, help them at least understand something. So um, for the girls who think that they cannot engage in technology, it doesn't really mean that to engage in technology, like you have to be a pro in like coding and programming. Like this, myself, I don't know how to code, but I'm still learning slowly, so it's a process. And to me, um, being a girl doesn't mean like you can't get these big jobs of a coder or a company owner. It just means that you can try harder to be the best you can be.